In this video, we're going to look at a possible solution to the exercise I gave you last time. Hopefully there were at least some bits of this that you could figure out how to do if you are going to follow the exercises in this course. If you didn't manage to do all of it, don't worry about it. Okay, so first we need to get the temperature and we've already seen how to ask the user to enter a number with age, for example. So let's try to do this. Temperature, we, we need a variable, equals input and enter the fridge temperature. So we've already seen this. Maybe you've already practiced this a bit. So I'm not gonna run the program just yet. So I'm confident this will work. Now let's say if the temperature is less than zero, colon, and then with an indent, print fridge is too cold. Okay, that's the first bit, right? Now, what do you think? Will that actually work? No, it doesn't work. Why not? Well, let's try it. So Python and fridge solution.py, enter the fridge temperature. Well, this bit seems okay. Five and we get a trace back. The problem is on line 16, and we're trying to compare a string with an int, right? So the temperature that we've got here is a string because it came back from this input function. We need to convert it to a int or a float. Now we could do that right here, but we're gonna be using temperature over and over again. So here's something else that we could do. We can say temperature equals, so let's say that this is gonna be a float because if you've got an int, if the user enters an int like five, that can be cast to a float. It can be interpreted as 5.0. But if the user enters a float and you try to cast that to an int, like they enter 5.5, how are you gonna interpret that as an int? So let's take the most general option and use the float function to cast this to a float. So what am I actually doing here? I'm taking temperature, I'm passing it to the float function that returns a floating point value, an actual numerical value. And then I'm assigning that back to this temperature variable. You could have also used a different variable here if you want. Here I'm just reusing the same variable. So here, I'm assigning to the variable a string, and here I'm assigning to the variable a floating point value. This might not look legitimate to you, but it totally is. We can pass temperature to this float function and then store the return value of that back in temperature, or maybe it's better to say technically, I can make temperature refer to this new numerical value. You could have also instead just put float here. That would be maybe more in keeping with, with what we've already done. If you do this, then you don't need that. But we are gonna end up in that case doing this over and over again. And this bit here, well, this is like the if statements we've previously seen. It's just that, remember here, we need a condition that evaluates to either true or false. And for that condition, I've used the less than binary operator to compare temperature with the value zero. So let's see if this works now. Enter the fridge temperature, five. Okay, it doesn't print anything and that's what I expect. Now let's try it again. Enter the fridge temperature, minus four. Fridge is too cold. So, so far it works. Now, if you did attempt the exercise and you couldn't figure it out, then you might wanna consider pausing the video at this point and seeing if you can now complete the rest of this program. We're gonna carry on and take a look at the rest of it now. So if the temperature is zero to four, print fridge, okay. So we want elif now, elif temperature. Now we, we already know that the temperature is not less than zero. If it was less than zero, this would have run, and then we won't get to this bit. So the temperature is not less than zero. All we have to do is check 
is it less than four? And then we can say print fridge OK. Then we want to see if the temperature is between four and six. Now we already know if we get down here that the temperature is not less than four. So let's say elif temperature is less than six print fridge to warm. Now the temperature could be four, which is probably the ideal temperature for a fridge actually, and this would actually execute. Let's just try it and prove it. So if I run it and I say the temperature is four, it says fridge too warm. So you could, of course you could alter the actual temperature cutoff points here. And we could also say less than or equal to four if we want. And then if I enter four, it's gonna say fridge okay. Now what else? Okay, if the temperature is greater than six, print fridge broken. Well, if we get to this point down here in this sort of compound if statement, we know that the temperature can't be less than six. It must be at least six. So we might as well just say else here and say print fridge is broken. Let's see if this works. So I want to test all these different options. Yeah, and I forgot a colon. Don't forget a colon. All right, let's try it. Enter the fridge temperature, minus four. Fridge is too cold. Let's try zero. Fridge is okay, because it only says fridge is too cold if the temperature is less than zero. So zero to four, I want fridge okay. So that's correct. Let's try four. Still fridge okay. Now let's try five. Fridge too warm. What about six? Fridge is broken now. And it's gonna be the same for higher temperatures, like 110 or whatever. So this is working. Now, I think whether you found this really complicated or not, it's probably gonna depend on how much you practice the stuff you've seen so far. And it probably depends a little bit on aptitude. Some people think in these kind of very rigid logical terms that you have to think in to an extent as a programmer more easily than others. But do not be discouraged if you didn't manage to do this. It was a little bit tricky and there are multiple different ways that you could do it as well. If you got it working by any means, then give yourself a pat on the back, I think. And if you didn't get it working, the thing to do now is type this out, try it out for yourself and then try experimenting with it See if you can alter it, maybe to add in some different temperature ranges or something. And then see if it works as you expect when you alter it. So you just need to play around with this a little bit if you didn't manage to get this so far. If you can get to the point where you can write this code without looking at it, then that's a really great point to be at. I don't say it's absolutely necessary to continue with the course. But if you want some way, some concrete way of gauging your progress so far, if you can get to the point where you can write this program without referring back to the code, and just by looking at the specification here, then I think you're doing an extremely good job. Hello, you've been watching a free sample from my Python and Machine Learning for Complete Beginners course. I'm uploading enough videos from the start of the course to get you started with Python and machine learning. The full course is absolutely massive. If you're interested in it, please click the link in the description. The complete course covers not only basic Python, but also some fairly advanced Python, even some desktop programming stuff, and then goes on to machine learning and artificial intelligence. Until next time, happy coding.